May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to our worship service, first Sunday after Easter. Let's begin our worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we all sing to the glory of God the hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Please join with me singing, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Let us adore God. Shall we all in unison say the prayer of adoration? Glory to you, O God. On this day, you won victory over death, raising Jesus from the grave and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ. For us and for our salvation, you overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit, you lead us into the truth. Glory to you, O Blessed Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us enter into time of thanksgiving. After each prayer of thanksgiving, I request you to kindly say your response. Christ, in your resurrection, the heavens and the earth rejoice. Hallelujah. By your resurrection, you broke open the gates of hell and destroyed sin and death. Keep us victorious over sin. By your resurrection, you raised the dead and brought us from death to life. Guide us 
in the way of eternal life. By your resurrection, you confounded your guards and executioners and filled the disciples with joy. Give us joy in your service. By your resurrection, you proclaimed good news to the women and apostles and brought salvation to the whole world. Direct our lives as your new creation. In unison, let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death, you raise us with him and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow us, your people, towards the fullness of eternal life with you through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Call to confession. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us examine ourselves in silence and humbly confess our sins to the Almighty God. Shall we all say the prayer of confession? Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life, abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Absolution. May the Almighty and merciful God grant us pardon and remission for all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Collect. Let us read the Collect of the Day. O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who has given your only Son, the firstborn over all creation, to die for our sins, grant us so perfectly and without any doubt to believe in his resurrection so that we continue to be faithful to this firm foundation, not allowing ourselves to be shaken from the hope that we have heard and learned from your gospel through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Now the Old Testament, followed by the epistle lesson, would be read to us. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Exodus chapter 3, beginning to read from the 13th verse. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob has appeared to me, saying, I have observed you and what has been done to you in Egypt, and I promise that I will bring you up out of the 
the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, land flowing with milk and honey. This here ends the lesson. Thanks be to thee, O God. Hear the word of God as it is written in St. Paul's Epistle to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. Colossians, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, once who were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Your hands the reading. Thanks be to you, O God. Shall we all sing the hymn, O Master, let me walk with thee. Shall we all sing, O Master, let me walk with thee. Now the Gospel lesson would be read to us. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 20 verses 24 to 29. Jesus and Thomas. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord, but he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. 
Here ends the Gospel reading. Praise be to thee, O Christ. The preacher for this special service is Reverend Solomon Paul, whom you all know very well. I welcome Reverend Solomon Paul on behalf of each one of you and the pastorate committee, and I request him to share with us the message from the Word of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, grace and peace to all of you in the name of Jesus. Pope John Paul II once said, We are the Easter people and hallelujah is our song. We are the Easter people and hallelujah is our song. We as the people of resurrection are called to live out our faith in this world today. Dear friends, for our short meditation, the theme that is set before us is Affirmation of Christ as Lord and God. Affirmation of Christ as Lord and God. To affirm is to assert or to confirm our belief in something. Dear friends, today we are called to affirm our faith in Christ. We are called to affirm Christ as our Lord in a very difficult time. COVID-19 pandemic and the unprecedented lockdown is giving us a lot of challenges, especially when the lives of the weak and the vulnerable are at stake, and especially when there is so much of suffering, fear and anxiety all around us, we as a community of faith are called to affirm our faith in Christ as our Lord and our God. Certainly it is a challenging time for us as a congregation. Amidst this kind of fear and insecurity that we are living, we are called to reorient our mission priorities as a congregation. Dear friends, affirming our faith in Christ is not just mere words, but then it should become a way of life. It should become a pragmatic way in altering our attitudes and our actions, enabling us to think not just for ourselves, but also for our neighbors. Affirming our faith in Christ as our Lord and our God is certainly the way of life that scripture implores us. The readings that were read to us from the Old Testament, from the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 to 17, we see that God affirms that he is the Lord of the afflicted and the oppressed. God affirms that he is the Lord of the afflicted and the oppressed. We see a beautiful conversation between God and Moses. And in this conversation, God reveals himself to Moses. God says that I am who I am. In a way, God announces God's presence and compassion in the midst of the suffering people. And God also invites everyone to come and see, to come and experience how good God is. And it is in this kind of a context, God tells Moses that he has been very, very mindful to the sufferings of the people of Israel in Egypt. Dear friends, the book of Exodus expounds how the people of Israel were put into hardship and slavery in Egypt. And at this juncture, we see God sharing his words of care and compassion to Moses. Through this passage, we understand God's preferential option for the poor. Through this passage, dear friends, we understand that God always sides with the weak and the vulnerable, and that God is in complete solidarity 
with those who are facing systemic injustice even in our world today. It is also our need to side with them and to stand with them in their struggle for justice and peace. This passage, dear friends, challenges us to set a paradigm for our mission. Always standing in solidarity with those who are oppressed, with those who are weak and vulnerable, as it is God's preferential option. Today, we as a community of faith are called to hold on to that choice of God, to clinging on to that choice of God in affirming that yes, we as a community stand with the weak and the marginalized of our society. The second passage that was read to us from the Gospel, John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29, tells us as to how affirming Christ as Lord is to deny the lordship of life-negating realities that are around us. Affirming Christ as our Lord is to deny the lordship of the life-negating realities that are around us. This passage focuses on the confession made by Thomas. Jesus yet again meets his disciples after sharing the peace he talks to Thomas and tells him to come and examine his wounds. He tells Thomas to move from his disbelief towards belief in Christ, that resurrected Christ, dear friends. Tradition always says that Thomas was a doubting Thomas. But then we also find Thomas to be a daring Thomas. When all his counterparts were locked behind closed doors out of fear, we see Thomas not being with them. But then Thomas was out in the open. We are able to see his courage and boldness and his daringness even in this time of fear and anxiety. And after encountering the risen Christ, the first words that were uttered out of his mouth, My Lord and my God, my dear friends, these were not just mere words, but then they are words uttered in the context of Roman imperialism. We all know that the author of St. John's Gospel had a community behind him, and this community was called the Johannine community. And this Johannine community was going through a lot of persecution just because they followed Jesus Christ. When the Roman imperial cult gave a call to all the subjects to profess their faith in Domitian, the Roman emperor, calling him to be their lord and their god, we see this Johannine community putting their faith in Christ amidst that kind of a persecution, amidst that kind of a troublesome situation, we see them professing their faith in Christ professing Him as their Lord and their God, dear friends. Today in our world, we live with different identities. At times, the identities that we share, we often celebrate them. We often take pride of our own identities. Identities such as caste, patriarchy, color, creed, at times overtakes our faith in Christ, dear friends. But then the scripture always encourages us and wants us to say that we cannot serve two masters at the same time. No one can serve Christ and caste. We cannot serve Christ and patriarchy. We cannot serve Christ and color. If we have to profess our faith in Christ, we also at the same time have to make a concrete choice in denying the lordship of the life-negating forces that are amidst us. The third passage, the epistle reading that was read to us from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. Paul writes these words, enabling us to understand the magnitude of Christ. He says that Christ is the image of the invisible God. 
he says that the first born of all creation was Christ and it was through Christ and in Christ that all things seen and unseen were created. Dear friends, we believe that Christ is the source of our being and the ground of our existence. But amidst all these faith confessions, we should be very, very mindful that Christ always took upon the nature of a servant. He took upon the nature of a suffering servant, wanting to serve and not to be served. Knelt down and washed the feet of his disciples, took upon the cross in adhering to the will of his father. We see a servant lordship in Jesus Christ. A lordship which is not filled with dominion, a lordship that does not profess power and authority, but then a servant lordship in Jesus Christ. And dear friends, we are called to be servants of this servant lord. We are called to be servants of this servant lord who displayed love, who displayed forgiveness, who displayed care and compassion to all the people who looked up to him. Dear friends, as we continue to celebrate this life of Jesus, we are called to redefine our relationships, redefine our relationships in our own families. How do we look at our fellow members? What are the kind of values that we exhort, especially when we worship this servant Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ? Do we treat them with equality? Do we treat them with respect? Are the questions that we need to ponder upon. The COVID-19 situation and the lockdown has seen a rise in the domestic violence, has seen a rise in the number of child abuse cases in India today. But then we as Christian families, dear friends, who worship the servant Lord are called to cling on to these values of equality and respect in our own families. We are called to become servants of this servant Lord as we share the compassion of God in and around us. Dear friends, as we continue on our faith journey, let us be reminded that God affirmed Christ and Christ affirms us in our doing and in our witness. Affirming Christ as Lord is always to deny our allegiance to all the life-negating realities that are around us. Affirming Christ as our Lord is to stand in solidarity with the weak and the vulnerable. It is to become servants of this servant Lord, dear friends. And to that end, may God continue to encourage us and continue to shape our faith. May God bless these words. Amen. In response to the word of God, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us enter into time of intercession. Let us intercede. After each bidding, your response shall be hear our prayer. We pray for your church in this world that it may be obedient to your will and strong in your spirit to show your love and glory to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and for all countries where people are suffering due to deadly infectious coronavirus. We pray that people may live in peace and COVID-19 infections would come to an end very soon. Lord, 
in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for all the affected that all people may get correct medicines and timely treatment we also remember all people who have lost their beloved ones and in sorrow that god may comfort them lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for the doctors nurses medical staff caregivers sanitation staff government officials and police officers who are working with total dedication and sacrifice that god would give them protection and blessings lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for the poor and the helpless especially the migrant workers and people who live on streets that they may receive shelter food water medical care love and respect lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for people who are lonely and gripped with fear and panic that they may be relieved of fear and experience your love through their friends and neighbors lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for common public gripped with worries and anxiety and who are roaming without sense of direction or purpose that they may receive your comfort and peace and all would abide by the instructions given by authorities lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for our prime minister chief ministers of all the states and those who are in power that they may be guided by good counselors to take appropriate steps as and when needed that they would undertake proper welfare measures to take care of all people lord in your mercy hear our prayer eternal god our father we commit our struggles and sufferings into your son's wounded hands our hopes and aspirations into his praying hands our poor hungry and exploited fellow human beings into his just and caring hands our living and departed into his hands that hold the key to the future blessed be the lord forever amen let us receive god's blessings may the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all amen I welcome you to the breaking of the bread. How very good and pleasant it is when people of God live together in unity. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Now I will offer in this tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us greet each other with namaskar and say to one another the peace of the lord be with you peace of god be with you shall we all sing the hymn i will sing of my redeemer shall we sing i will sing of my redeemer
Rejoicing in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ among us. Shall we all in unison say the prayer of presence? Be present, be present, O Jesus, your good high priest, as you were in the midst of your disciples. Make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is indeed right our duty and highest joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, holy, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom you created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them and made humankind in your own image and when it had fallen into sin you redeemed it to be the first fruits of a new creation therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying holy 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 lord god of hosts Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed be he that hath come and is to come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Truly holy, truly blessed are you, O God our Savior, who of your tender love towards humankind gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. who in the same night when he was betrayed took bread and after having given thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, 
in remembrance of me. Amen. Thy death, O Lord, we commemorate. Thy resurrection we confess. And thy second coming we await. Glory be to thee, O Christ. Therefore, O Lord, our God, remembering the precious death and passion and glorious resurrection and ascension of your Son, O Lord, we, your servants, do this in remembrance of him as he commanded until his coming again, giving thanks to you for the perfect redemption which you have brought about for us in him. We give thanks to thee, we praise thee, we glorify thee, O Lord, our God. And we most humbly ask you, O merciful God, to sanctify with your Holy Spirit us and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that the bread which we break may be the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ, grant that being joined together in him, we may all attain to the unity of the faith and may grow up in all things unto him, who is the head, even Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours, O God Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. With a true penitent heart, shall we all say the prayer of humble access? We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. As the bread and the cup is lifted, I request the head of the family to lift the bread and the cup. When we break the bread, do we not share in the body of Christ? We seek to share your life, gracious God. When we lift the cup, do we not share in the lifeblood of Christ? We seek to share your life, gracious God. Shall we all sing, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
having now by faith received the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ, let us give thanks. O gracious God, you have fed us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. You have ushered us in these holy mysteries of your favor and goodness toward us, that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. For these great benefits, we thank you. And in union with your Son, we offer you ourselves as a living sacrifice. And now, Lord, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto God forever and ever. Amen. In closing, shall we all sing, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. In closing, shall we sing, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. Let us receive God's blessings in faith. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.